Hey traders, I'm Steve and welcome to Jackrabbit Trader. In this video we're going to talk about the five reasons I love swing trading using weekly charts. All right, and why if you're serious about making money in the markets, they really need to be a primary focus. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to profit from a simple trading process, then you've come in the right place. We're putting out new videos every week, so be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and remember if you enjoy the content, smash the like button. With that said, let's get started. All right, so before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about my story so you know where I'm coming from and why I really rely on weekly charts. I tried, started trading uh, right after the 2008, or actually right before the 2008 uh, stock market crash and thought I knew everything, had some money, was out of college and uh, you know, I just wanted to throw some money at the market and thought you know that was the way you did it and ultimately you throw money in the market and you make money. But that wasn't really the case and obviously we went through some, uh, some downturns in 2008, 2009 with the recession. And then, you know, it really kind of uh, kicked me a little bit to know that I didn't have a process. Like, I didn't have any type of trading. And maybe that's where you're at now. And maybe, uh, you know, that's uh, where you're trying to get to is to have a process. So I used to look at daily charts. I used to look at hourly charts. I used to try and figure out, you know, I learned technical analysis, wanted to apply it to every single chart that I had. Um, and it really wasn't until I found the weekly chart that uh, the whole process and the whole consistency started kicking in. And I would say now for the last maybe two to three years, uh, you know, pretty significant um, change and pretty consistent um, and feel much more comfortable in the market. You know, a lot more. Uh, obviously, I, I can't guarantee that I'm going to make money, but uh, I don't feel as emotional and as uh uh, you know, jumpy when things aren't going my way because I feel like I can fall back on. I have a proven process. I know what I need to do. Uh, I've trained myself to not just follow a system, but to be able to actually trade. And that's what I want to kind of touch on here today. And a lot of that has to do with the weekly chart um, and giving me the, I guess, emotional support that I need to be able to trade and trade, you know, well and trade consistently. Um, because I'm not involved in the market as much as everyone else. I'm not day trading. I'm not swing trading, uh, you know, daily charts, hourly charts. I'm really doing that on weekly charts. So I want to go through the five reasons that I love swing trading using the weekly charts. Um, and I call it swing trading loosely. I mean, there are times that I take some trades, targets, and other times that I'm just trend following. But uh, the, the main point of this video is just to see how the weekly chart has really allowed me to go ahead and, and hone my process and be able to watch the market, follow the market, and not feel trapped or ever uh, emotionally angry, frustrated, uh, or anything like that by just understanding that price is price and uh, we're going to follow the markets and wherever they go, right? We're not going to tell the markets where they go. So the first thing I want to talk about, number one, you know, reason number one, uh, we can see the bigger trends, right? Um, so here we're looking at a chart of AIG and we're looking at a daily chart. And I want to just show you the difference of, of what you know I used to look at. And I'm not saying that is wrong. It's just this is what works for me um, because I do work a full-time job. I can't necessarily watch the markets all day. Um, you know, I'm not going to say I'm not, I don't flip it on my phone and, and take a look, but uh, I can't sit there and watch every little tick, right? I need to catch those bigger moves and that's where the bigger trends come into play so uh, you know if you look here at AIG obviously we have a couple trend lines that we can draw on the daily chart um, maybe some support areas you know down around 52 and maybe 54 is some resistance 57 is being resistance right so you know if you just looked at this chart you would say hey you know what this chart this may break out we can get back over 57 and then you know we're off to the races right i mean look at the chart there's nothing to the left side that would indicate any type of resistance the biggest one is this 54 level which goes all the way back you know to uh to september but then you take a look at the weekly chart okay and now all of a sudden things change a little bit 
All right. So now where we were looking at this being an uptrend, which it is, okay, understand the context of that uptrend. All right. Now it's an uptrend in an overall downtrend. All right. And look at where AIG is coming in. You know, we came in and look at the touches of this trend line. One here, you know, maybe call it one there, another one there, and sure enough, another one here. All right. So that's number one, right? There's the trend. But then number two on, on my top reasons is able to understand the more prominent support and resistance. And we identified some support and resistance here areas here on the daily chart. But again, flip over to the weekly and now look at what's coming into play. All right. We're looking at a three year weekly chart here. Look at this level. All right. Look at this 58 level. All right. And we'll, we'll highlight it. You have all these touches here. You, know, you have another touch here, another touch here. All right. And then we break down below that level. And sure enough, now we come back up. We rally right back to where? 58. All right. So weekly charts really not only can they show you the bigger trend, but they also show you the bigger uh, support and resistance areas. And again, you know, it works the same way. You know, maybe you can consider this 52 area a bigger support area. All right. Look at, you know, we're, we're essentially have a consolidation along that 52 look at all the support that AIG found around that 52 area okay look at all those times it touched and now here it is again you know touched just recently twice all right all 52 so on a chart that if you looked at just the daily chart you would say hey this is a great looking stock this thing can run forever whatever it may be if you don't flip over to the daily chart, or I'm sorry, to the weekly chart, you're you're looking at it so, sort of in a vacuum. And I think if you're going to trade the daily chart, you have to understand what's happening on the weekly. No doubt about it. All right. And for me, I don't really trade the daily chart. I trade the weekly. So I don't really care what's happening on the daily as much as I care what's happening on the weekly. And you could see that just from this AIG example, you know, not only have we identified maybe a longer term downtrend, which AIG came right up into hit and reversed. We've also been able to now identify prominent support and resistance areas that AIG maybe is now just range bound between, let's call it 58 and 52. All right. And let's see which one breaks first. But, uh, you know, again, looking at the weekly chart, it kind of lets you step back and really see the bigger picture and understand what exactly is happening with the stock and you're not looking at it with blinders on in a very small time frame right so that's reasons one and two number three stops are wider all right position size is smaller and that helps us keep emotions in check and to look at that let's take a look at comcast all right so comcast right so full disclosure as of the recording of this video, uh, August 20th, uh, I'm long 171 shares of Comcast. You can see that uh, with this green bubble here for my purchase. And the one thing I wanna point out here is when, when I enter a position, all right, I'm entering off the weekly chart and we'll zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier to see here. But we're, I entered Comcast on a breakout. My entry price was 44.69. Okay, currently we're trading 43.94. So if I looked at it from a daily chart perspective, all right, now you could see, you know, maybe that breakout is not as clear, whatever the case may be, but now we start to get into bigger positions because we're looking at tighter stops. All right, so say Comcast broke out, let's, let's call it right here, right? Here's the breakout in Comcast. And maybe we're going to use uh, this level here. Uh, where are we? You know, maybe this is our breakout right here. All right. So anything under 4198, we're out of the trade. All right. And nothing would be wrong with that. You know, if we looked at it from a uh, daily chart perspective. So anything under 42, we're out of the trade. Well, sure enough, Comcast, we broke out and then came straight down, ultimately breaking and closing below 42 only to bounce and go back up. Well, now, right, the market's against you. Uh, you know, of course, it knows where your positions are, where your stops are, whatever it may be. That's not the case. The case is, first of all, you didn't look at the weekly chart 
and see the more defined support area at 41, right? You don't even see 42 on this chart because it doesn't exist, right? 41 is the chart, is the, is the support, right? Here's 42. And again, going back to the weekly, here's the breakdown, the bounce. 41 becomes the stop level, right? So going back to item, or reason number two, but again, sticking on three where the stops are wider, position size is smaller. So now we're in it. I can, because my position size or my, my stop is all the way down to 41, my position size is much smaller. What does that do for me? Well, not only is it keeping my emotions in check, I'm not worried about every little tick in the market, right? I'm not worried it went down a dollar today, up a dollar tomorrow, whatever it is. I'm not worried about that because I've sized my position correctly to accommodate the risk tolerance that I am willing to take. But also, it just gives me time, right? It just gives, gives me time to just let the stock work, all right? I'm not micromanaging it. I know it's in an uptrend from looking at the weekly chart. I'm assuming it's going to continue that uptrend, right? But if it doesn't and it breaks below 41, then I'm wrong. Uptrend's over, I'm out. But because those stops are wider, position sizes are smaller, my emotions are in check to be able to uh, stay in the, in the stock, in the trade, while it goes from 45 down to 41, right? Think about it, $4 in risk. Well, if you're trading, uh, say, a $10,000 account and you have 100 shares or 1,000 shares or whatever it may be and your risk is too much, you know, are you willing to lose $1,000 on one trade? Not for me in my in my scenario, I'm not willing to risk 10% on any one trade. All right, my risk tolerance is a half a percent of my account. Um, so looking at this, it just gives me, you know, it, it's a it's a emotional release, I guess you can call it, that I don't need to. I don't care what this does. I don't care what Comcast does. I mean, obviously, if it gaps down to 30, I care. But I don't care if it comes down or up or whatever. I just want overall us to continue trending higher and that keeps my emotions in check and it allows me to let the trade just work. I'm not micromanaging it. I'm not getting in my own way. With that said, sticking on Comcast, my timing can be off, right? And I could still make money. My timing can be off. I don't have to be perfect. And look at, you know, again, sticking with the Comcast trade. I basically bought the highs. 44.69, the high was 45.25. I was off by not even a dollar, all right? And then I allowed it to come all the way back down, allowed it to work because my position size is small, doesn't matter. And now here we go, we're, we're, we're moving higher again. And now instead of being down five, $600, I'm down 40. And again, <laughs> I'll be the first one to admit, uh, my timing in the market is absolutely awful. All right, you ask me to time the market, it's not going to happen. All right, you might as well take the other trade every single time. Uh, it doesn't work for me. I can't do it. All right, and because I like to buy breakouts, that's my bread and butter. You know, I'll buy a pullback here and there, but it's always usually a breakout trade. And usually when I'm buying that breakout, the move is almost done already. I'm going to close this a little bit so I can actually see you guys. All right, that didn't work either. Let's see. There we go. All right, so my timing sucks. Plain English. All right, and because I don't have to be perfect, all right, I can just let the stock work. But think about it, right? Take take a trade. Go down to the hourly chart on Comcast. All right, you got to be perfect every single time. And you know you could take the breakouts and you could take the you know the down the down trades. You could take the up trades. But the move is so minuscule that if you mistime the entry, your, your, your risk reward is all of a sudden skewed in the other way. It's skewed to the market's favor. All right. And that's not what you want. You want to skew it to your favor. So, you know, for argument's sake, you know, look at Comcast on an hourly chart. All right. You tell me, hey, can you trade that? I can't trade this. All right. I, it, to me, it gives me anxiety just looking at all the, the you know, ups and downs and ups. And, that, that, I can't do it. All right, give me a daily chart. Maybe, all right, maybe I can pull it off. But again, going back to what we just talked about, it doesn't work. The 42 level broke, I'm out of the trade, right? All right, and, and if that was your risk, fine. But then give me a weekly chart, all right? And let's go back to that weekly. And it's just 
clean, okay? It's just a nice trend higher, a little bit of a pullback. You're sizing everything accordingly, all right? And it just allows you to not be perfect because I'm not perfect. I cannot time the market. And it, this, you know, again, I bought the highs, all right? I bought the highs. As of right now, I bought the highs. Uh, and you know what? My position size is small and I just let it work. And let's see if it comes back around but I'm allowing myself an opportunity to make money in the market. And that's all you can ask for. And last but not least, the biggest one for me, all right, is what we started off with. I cannot watch the market all day, all right? And the more I watch the market, the more mistakes I make. Days off that I have and I'm trading, I, I might as well just, you know, light it on fire and, and burn it in the streets. Uh, not good, right? Um, and that's because I get in my own way, right? I don't want to watch the markets. And with the weekly charts, everything is based off a weekly candle. And the weekly candle doesn't close till Friday. So the way I trade, I'll go in on the weekends. If I'm going to make any trades, I put the trades in. If I want to close any trades, I put them in. The only difference is that if, you know, we get something like a, you know, there's been a couple... Uh, I don't want to say home runs, but some great trades that we've had uh, where, you know, here's here's a trade that I had in CDNS. All right. I got in at 59. I got out a little bit at 62, a little bit more at 63. All right. Those trades are taken off during the week because what I do is I go in at lunchtime. I look at the profit and loss for the day or for the uh, open since I've had the trade. And you say, hey, I'm up $600 on that trade. Well, you know what? I'm going to take some money off the table and I just go in, I sell half. And then if I want to take a little more, I sell a little more. Okay. And that's really the only trades that I make during the week. That and some hedge positions to just trade around the SPY, but I keep it very simple. And that's all I can do. All right. Because I don't want to watch the market all day. Even on the days that I'm off, I want to be at the beach. I want to be at the hockey rink with the kids. I want to be hanging out with everybody. All right. I don't want to be tied to watching 5, 10, 15 hourly charts that doesn't work for me it's not the kind of life i want to live so because of the weekly chart i'm out of the market more often than i'm in it i come in when i need to and i go on about my life and that's all i you know that's all i ask i have the opportunity to make money and the less i'm in the market the more profitable i seem to be so uh, those are the five reasons that i really love swing trading the weekly chart uh, we talk about that in the uh, I have a free e-course at jackrabbittrader.com slash weekly process. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And I hope you really look to uh, focus on the weekly chart because, as I said, it really changed the way I trade and it really changed my profitability, my consistency. Um, next week, we're going to look at my performance for August 2019. So be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell. And again, if you like the content, please like the video. Other than that, we'll see you next time. And remember, stop predicting and start reacting. Take care.